competitive online gaming, whether it be at the professional level or just to satiate one's own competitive nature, <laughs> there are plenty of games to meet your needs today. Two of the biggest and most immediate ones that come to my mind are League of Legends and Fortnite. Now, I don't really like Fortnite, so I haven't played it very much, and I also don't like League of Legends very much, despite the fact that I can't stop playing it. But what if I were to tell you that there's a game on Steam that is the perfect love child of these two? A fantastic gem that has a bigger scene overseas than here in the West, with a development team so incredibly based that they present a stats list on banned players every so often. If any of that caught your attention, then may I present to you Eternal Return. Now granted, this is going to be my first impressions of the game as I've only played it for a few days at most, but it was a furious few days. As in, playing it a lot, not raging. Not all the time, at least. Anyways. Eternal Return is a Korean MOBA Battle Royale. Now, wait a minute, before you click off to go vomit hearing those two terms being put side by side, just give me a chance to sell you on this, okay? This is like the gaming equivalent of selective breeding, where they took the best traits of each and put them into one game. Now you may have already heard of this game before, and I wouldn't say it's completely obscure or anything like that, but I do want to bring it to more people's attention, so here's a video. The game is technically a sequel to another weird take on the Battle Royale genre called Immortal Soul Black Survival, formerly just Black Survival. It's like a real-time strategy game with the same characters or something. I don't know, get that shit out of here. We're talking about the other one today. Upon opening the game, you'll be taken to one of the best main menu themes I've ever heard. Eternal Return has three ways to play, solos, duos, and squads of three. When you load into a match, you'll be taken to this screen where you choose your character and your item plan. The plan you use is going to dictate a large chunk of the match for you, but how do you know what plan to use? Just choose one of the recommended or download a popular one in the loadout section before queuing for a game. It's really player friendly in that regard, so you don't have to try and make your own plans before you really know what's going on. You can also see what other characters are being chosen, so that you can change in case you are worried about there not being enough materials for that character's meta build to go around. Once the experiment begins, it's time to loot. Just like in any other battle royale, you gotta arm yourself quick if you wanna survive. But here, you don't just have RNGs bless your unspanked ass with a gold to your gun right off the bat to mow down all the 8 year olds. Instead, you have to craft your items, and that's where the plan comes in. Your plan will tell you what weapons and armor are good for your character, along with the path you should take across the map to optimize your scavenging. But how do you figure out what resources you need? See this little yellow triangle? That means you need it. If it doesn't have that, don't pick it up, with some exceptions. Auto loot will also just pull any required items into your inventory now, which is really nice. Care packages are also delivered around the map all the time with random items inside, and some materials are just extremely rare and have global notifications for their arrivals. Then of course, there's your abilities. Just like any League of Legends champ, you have your three basics and an ultimate, but you also get a weapon skill and an upgradable passive. The weapon skill depends on the weapon that you start the match off with. Plans can even be set up to remind you what order you should level up your skills in. You level up through the match by doing various tasks, one of which being the previously explained crafting and harvesting. You also get experience from hunting, exploring, and fighting other players. Exploring is simple, just going to new places, but hunting refers to killing the various wild animals that can be found across the island. Bats, bears, wolves, and boars all give you experience and resources that you may need down the line. They will respawn after a while and increase in level with each death. There's also mini bosses that will appear and drop rare items and such, like the terrifying Wickaline that wanders the map in the late game. You'll also have to concern yourself with making food and beverages later on. Unlike the dumb crap in Fortnite where you have to sit still to have a fucking drink of water and heal yourself in chunks, Eternal Return's recovery system is all about regen, baby. Food tends to recover HP and beverages tend to recover SP or mana or whatever you want to call it. Once again, various materials craft different foods, so you'll have to go searching. Here's a good tip I've learned for getting food though, for starting out. Look for lighters. I much prefer the regeneration method for healing since it gives you a fighting chance when in combat, compared to getting jump and then having to hide and heal. 
And of course, it's a battle royale. So you gotta be the last one standing out of 18 players or nine duos or six squads. Go fight other players, and if you kill them, you get to loot their bodies and get a bunch of XP on the side. Zones become closed off after some time, and you are only allowed to be in restricted areas for a total of 30 seconds a game, so you can use that to your advantage to escape through the research center if you're being hunted by Luke. Be the last squad standing and you win. And that's it. That's the game. As I've already said, this game manages to pull out all the best parts of League and Fortnite and just smush them all together, and it's crazy fun. Like, there isn't even that many rewards outside of the game itself to grind for, aside from the new Battle Pass that was just added. So I just kept playing because it's fun. It's just plain fun, and like anything else, it's even better with friends. Now, I should emphasize this in case the devs are watching. We didn't team up. We didn't help people in a different group than us, none of that crap. Teaming is taken very seriously by Nimble Neuron, which I really appreciate. Teaming is dumb, don't do it, don't cheat in the game, if you do that you suck eggs. That being said, when you have four friends who want to play together in a game that only offers up to three man squads, we would just queue duos at the same time since the player base is small enough for us to usually end up in the same game. And yes, it's lots of fun chasing down your friends in a battle royale. Oh, the birthday boy, you do this to me. And if I saw a friend, I hunted them down just the same as anyone else. We're not friends anymore. Jesus. Well, former friends, I guess. Now, I should probably talk about who I choose to play. Uh, I already get heckled by my friends over my agent of choice, but I don't care. I like to play the main poster child of the game, Jackie. She's crazy, she's got a chainsaw, and she will run you down and slaughter you in the street. She's super fun and really mobile. I just love playing her. Now I already spent money to buy her Scarlet Corsage skin because it rules. It didn't take me too long to get into the rhythm of the game, and eventually I was even trying to make my own plans and paths instead of using the recommended. And now I have one that I'm really happy with called Haha ha, Jackie Go Burr. Granted, I ain't calling myself a mortal tier, I still suck at the game, but it's still a hell of a lot of fun. Maybe someday I'll try out ranked. Again, playing with friends in duos and squads is the most fun. We got a lot of wins there. Oh, and there's revives, both from just being downed and straight up death. Solo's still fun, just a lot harder. I also like the aesthetic of the game and its lore, like how the whole thing is set up as an experiment and the testing ground is just this island that's moderately grounded in reality without the locations being too wacky and whatnot. I don't know, I just think it's cool. Something something, I'm an edgelord. I do want to take a moment to talk about Nimble Neuron though, and I swear it's not just a bootlick, but these devs are so cool. NN really seems to care about their community and really want to make it grow and flourish, which is part of why I made this video. I can see how much they care about this game, and I felt it from playing, so I think they deserve some more recognition. As mentioned earlier, I love how they present statistics on the number of players recently banned and the reasons why. I think that's really funny and awesome at the same time. Their ban policies are also really clearly laid out, and NN also works really hard to integrate with Twitch and offer all kinds of rewards through drops from watching streamers play their game, which is sick. And they have a partner program or something? Not really sure on the details, but that's cool. Even as I was working on this video, I found out that they publicly offer a fan kit of game resources and images literally for the purpose of content creation. If that doesn't scream base developers, I don't know what else does. Right now is also probably the best time to get into the game since they just started Season 4. A lot of big changes were just made to the game including the addition of Augments, which is like League's Ruin System, a passive ability based loadout, and the ER Pass, a new Battle Pass system that gives you something to grind for. Again, I promise I'm not sponsored by them, although I wouldn't pass up the chance. I personally chose to shill this game because it's really, really fun and more people need to be aware of it and try it out. Oh, and did I mention that it's free to play? Oh, and it's only like 4 gigabytes big at the time of this video. Only real complaints I have are generic video game critiques, mostly involving balance. Any game with a champion system tends to have this problem where some people feel way too strong or dumb in general, like Luke being able to go back to near full health when he hits 20%, or the new priest dude Johan kiting you around the map endlessly and healing to full. Another one is reviving down players. Please allow us to stop crawling on the spot or just make it easier to revive. That gets pretty annoying, but those are just minor things. So yeah, that that's it. I just really want to talk about this game I was playing and share it with all of you. 
And if the devs see this video, great work so far. I'm definitely going to keep playing it in the future, so keep it up. Leave a like and subscribe. We're almost to 3K now. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see ya on Lumia Island. Jackie Gober!